What's going on? This is JDB here with a quick, uh, well, I don't know if it'd be a quick video, but uh, here's another video. This video is probably going to be titled, uh, how, ha how Having an Affair Made Me a Better Mother. And this is an article that I wanted to do for a while. I think I've had it, uh, I think I first saw it maybe two months ago. And it's from yahoonews.com or yahoo.com. And it's titled, Why Having an Affair Made Me a Better Mother. Now, I'm going to read a paragraph from it and I'll give you a little commentary. It said, when I was single, I swore I'd never settle for less than I deserve. So when, so when I married Brandon, I was confident I had found someone with whom I could build a life based on love and respect. And of course, the biggie, no cheating. My father had cheated on my mother and they'd split when I was young. Because of that, trust and honesty in relationships were critical to me, and infidelity was a deal breaker. Brandon understood this, so armed with that, I thought, I thought, and so armed with, with what I thought was a mutual understanding, we began our future together. Okay, so basically, she's giving some backstory, and from what I can surmise from that, is that she doesn't trust men her father cheated on her mother so she really doesn't have a trust for men move on you say in our early years together i'd admit that i'd overlooked some red flags brandon was handsome charming and overprotective although that protection sometimes came off as possessiveness here, here women go with this possessive crap he was so passionate about pursuing a career in the arts that I decided to refocus my own artistic goals, knowing we needed a stable income if to start a family. Sometimes we fought, and at times Brandon could be mean and dismissive of my feelings. But all couples argued, so I didn't overthink it. We had a good relationship despite our ups and downs. So basically, it just seems like the average things that go on in a relationship you know you're going to have the arguing you're going to have the different the different opinions of course when you have two people two, you know, together so that doesn't it's not really red flags i mean okay five years into our marriage and i was eight months pregnant i discovered that brendan had been having an affair for several months with a co-worker after he accidentally left his email open i was shocked and i began questioning everything about our relationship and most dangerously about myself i knew that i should leave him that i couldn't move past this but what would happen to me and our baby if i left could i start over now did i deserve this i didn't have the courage to find the answer so i stayed okay. the only explanation brandon could offer was that he liked the attention he was full of reassurances that it was a mistake and promised that he loved me I wanted so desperately to believe him, and I was so scared of what divorce would mean for me and our baby that I convinced myself that we could be the exception to my deal breaker rule. I'd be the perfect wife so Brandon wouldn't think about another woman again. I let's see, I buzzed myself preparing for our baby's arrival, making our house into a home. I cooked, did laundry, and cleaned. Confident these actions would solidify my worth as a woman, as a wife, and as a woman. If, any, if everything else externally, external uh, were organized and perfect, somehow the rest would be okay. Because of this marriage, no, this life was going to work out just as I'd planned. The years that followed was a blur. I worked a stressful nine to, to five a county job that provided us benefits gave birth to a second child and ran our household allowing brandon to follow his dream in the arts and i kept myself so busy that i became numb to my emotions then i reckon rec uh, re reconnected with my old friend ryan and everything changed we reconnected through social media in a typical wow what are you up to way at first i thought we'd just be friends we were both married with children and lived in different cities. An affair never even crossed my mind. Besides, there was no way I'd ever put Brandon or another woman, another wife, through the pain I'd experienced. Our affair began several years after our first email exchange. 
Eventually, emails turned into text, text turned into calls, and suddenly we were both had crossed an emotional line. We talked about everything, and for the first time in years, I felt heard. Ryan reminded me of who I was and all the dreams I had put on hold so that my husband could follow his. We knew each other's uh, histories and demons, and we accepted each other's completely. He made me feel more beautiful than anyone ever has. And the sex, my God, I had forgotten what it felt like to feel wanted and worthy. Well, I can say that she definitely gets her worth from sex. Um, for some reason, women only feel good about themselves when they're getting, you know, having sex with a guy that's not their husband or boyfriend. And I think it's clearly a, a sense of, of wanting to be accepted and loved, but at the same time, you wanted the married life. You know, I'm pretty sure she pursued her husband like most women would pursue a guy that they were attracted to, you know, and they're probably going to cheat. It is what it is. Let's go deeper. Let's go in this. Let's see. Drawing on my renewed confidence, I began expressing to Brandon what I had been suppressing for years, how alone I felt that I had been trying so desperately to be who I thought he wanted that I felt lost and I needed his support to find my way back. And she did that by cheating. Okay. I begged him to go to marriage counseling and explain that our sex life needed frequency and openness. I needed his help with the kids and for, and for our family to come first. Brandon claimed to hear me but continued to bail on family events and prior, prioritize his career. I went running back to Ryan, and this time it became a full-blown affair. We found ways to meet in different cities on nights. Brandon worked late, and the kids were asleep. We communicated via Skype. Our affair lasted almost two years and ended when Ryan confessed that his wife confessed to his wife after my sister, unbeknownst to me, threatened to do it for him. I told Brandon, too, he was shocked, angry, hurt, humiliated, unsure if he could forgive me but wondered that I'd leave him. He wanted answers, just as I had years before, but unlike him, I could explain how I got there. We finally started therapy, took responsibility for our betrayals, and at first, I thought we'd get through it, but ultimately, nothing had really changed, except that I knew my worth again. I filed for divorce. Cheating didn't give me a cliche happy ending. It gave me such, it gave me much more. Before the affair, I had the husband, the kids, and the house, but it was a facade because Brandon and I weren't in love. My affair, however, showed me that feeling desire breathes life into us, that sex and passion are part of what being in love is, that my opinion matters, and that I am deserving of respect and happiness. So I guess she didn't get respect in her marriage, so, okay. Society tells us that once we commit to marriage, only the most egregious sins should be caused to break that union but in truth there isn't always a terrible distinct reason to end a marriage sometimes people just aren't happy in ways that really matter it may turn out that the person you you're with stopped being right for you and never was and you meet someone who shows you that and while that's difficult and sad especially with kids involved it's also lucky I'd become so unhappy in my marriage that I couldn't really enjoy my time with the kids. Worse, they had begun internalizing my unhappiness, mistakenly believing it had to do with them. By separating from Brian, do better. I can better ensure that our children feel loved and secure, even under different roofs. People say that some couples can survive affairs. Maybe they can. But I've never seen it. After Brandon's affair, our marriage was profoundly broken and we were living a lie. I might have kept living that way forever and had gotten had not gotten a glimpse into how things could be. Now I'm strong enough to enough to settle for less again. Settle for, for never settle for less again. For these things I will forever be grateful. The strength I didn't have when I found my husband's affair, I found through my own. Okay, so is she going to say about her affair? I'll just say this. This is why marriage has become obsolete. Because you have women who are so busy trying to compete, not only financially with their husband, but they're trying to compete in accomplishments. 
but it's saying, well, they're trying to compete for attention. This man is probably working. He's, he's probably the only one in the house that's working. So he's stressed at his job because he has to take care of a family. She doesn't understand that. Okay. She used the fact that he had cheated on her as a way to say, well, I'm going to cheat. Now, do I think she's being honest about the several years before she started cheating? No. This woman's probably been trying to cheat for a while because women are very spiteful. They never forget when you cheat on them or you do something to them that pisses them off or makes them upset. And I'm pretty sure she had been planning to cheat for a long time because women are very calculating and they know when to, they know when to strike. That's, a, that's how a lot of women are. And she also said about how she felt a sense of self-worth and happiness in being a single mom. That is the feminist ideology. How in the fuck are you happy being a single mom? But then when you think about it, now you date. She can have as much promiscuous sex as she wants without having no strings attached. That's what a lot of these women want. They want to be able to work in, in, in a corporate American environment. They want to be able to have all the accomplishments, but at the same time, they want to have a great personal life. Can't have both. Because women who are trying to compete with men are just going to compete with their husbands. And that's going to make for a bad relationship. Like it really is. It's going to make for a bad relationship. And for her to say that that affair made her a better mother, I think she's being disingenuous. I think that she's not being honest with herself. How in the fuck is being a single mother who wants to just sleep around, who wants to work all the time, how is that going to make you a better mother explain that to me and let me know what you think in the comments section